show you how to solder your pin into your horn. Uh, we use the stainless steel tubing because the tubing is going to drill faster than a solid pin. Um, and uh, it is a little trickier to solder because it's, uh, you know, the wall thickness, it will heat up faster. But it, with any of these, if you uh, overheat the pin as you're putting it in, it will weaken the pin and it's going to break pretty fast. So to start with, what I did is I put a little bit of flux in the end of this horn and I'm going to heat it up, melt the flux, and it helps prep the surface so that I can put silver solder in it. The flux helps clean the metal. And what I want to do is I want to pre-tin this the silver solder. Now you can use a map torch or you can use oxyacetylene. Uh, the oxyacetylene is quite a bit more power than you need for doing it. The propane's a little slower, so you gotta be patient. But what you're looking for is that you get the silver solder to flow. We're using like a 60-40 silver solder mix. You usually can find it on the web. But I'm wanting to get this nice and heated and see it flow. Now it's looking pretty good. There's probably a little bit of an air pocket underneath it still but when I stick my needle in there my pin now I'm going to heat up the pin just a little bit you got to be careful because it'll heat pretty fast and I stick it in my flux now it helps to have steady hands my hands aren't as steady as they used to be I want to get the horn hot see my silver solder start to get liquid again I can poke at it a little bit with the pin but uh, what I want to do is I want to sink the pin down into that little pool of silver solder once it's liquid. Again, the propane's a little bit slower. You got to really watch that heat on that pin. To keep most of the heat on the horn. If you don't get your pin straight, just heat the horn back up. You don't really want to bend your pin at the bottom. Oh, you see I got that air pocket in there. Now this one's drilled a little deeper. I think I need some more silver solder. Once you fill it the first time with the silver solder, then that silver solder just stays in there. And when you change out pins, you don't have to use very much silver solder at all. I'm just kind of checking with my left hand while I see it start to go down in. And there it is. You grab that horn, make sure you grab it really low. And I always kind of check it first before I commit myself to grabbing it 100%. Alright. My flux is a little dry, but it doesn't matter. I can stick a little chunk in the end and I'll do another one so you guys can watch.
and the more of these you do the more you get better at it so when you do a whole lot of them you get to where it's kind of automatic and it gets easy um, I'm a little out of practice but like anything else you get a lot of practice you get good at it you see there's air coming out I want to get my silver in here now while the I got a good amount of flux in Hold some heat on it, let it flow out. Yeah, I can see the air bubble forming. See how it swelled up a little bit there. And another little bubble come up. A little bit more silver solder, and then we're ready for the pin here. best to have your at work area where you don't have a much stuff around so if you aren't really controlling the torch well you don't set anything on fire everything around me when I'm working like this is non flammables now I gotta heat my silver solder back up I can poke at it and check as soon as it but I don't have my pin down in that heat if I do I'll burn all the flux off my pin and it'll weaken the metal uh, with too much heat and then that pin will be susceptible to breaking. I see my flux starting to flow here. All right. That's pretty good. You'll get better the more you do. If you break some pins, don't get discouraged. It's pretty easy to put them back in. It's good to have a, a, a group of horns so you can put them all in and do it where you can get good at it doing a bunch at a time. And then you can go drill a bunch of holes.